down? No. <laughs> After nearly three months, Gus is back here with no buts about it. And welcome back to No Butts About It. I am, well, welcome back for season two of No Butts About It. I am still in my dining room in Indiana. I have not left this entire time. Chuss is still in his basement in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I, I think he left at some point. Um, if you heard me say no at the beginning of the show, it's because Chuss asked if there was a countdown, and there is not. So that was just a hard entry. Uh, welcome back, Chuss. Yeah, um, you know, I'm used to Riverside is the old platform we used to use to record our podcasts and i am used to seeing the five four three two one and then we jump right into it but uh we are now using Streamyard, which i'm sure josh has mentioned multiple times over the last couple of months which i know he has and i believe that this is my first show or second show on Streamyard, or at least one of my first videos so enough that i don't remember it's been long enough that I don't remember what's uh, going on there. So, um, so yeah. So that so I apologize for my uh, for my rustiness on that. But I am glad to be back. It's been a, quite a busy summer for me, as well as off season in March and April and May. I've been working a lot. I've been finishing up school, and obviously, I ran a basketball league over the summer as well. So I've been quite the busy guy. So I've been kind of. You know, just trying to tread everything, but I figured I wanted to come back. Call me like a Pat McAfee type concept, you know, where he comes back for college uh, football game day right as uh, college football begins, and during the off season, he's doing uh, WWE Monday Night Raw. So shout out to Pat McAfee, as if maybe shout he'll out. actually watch the show. So, as always, Pat McAfee is always welcome on the show. Just uh, send us an email, Bull Moose Podcast Two at Gmail dot com. Uh, we will be awaiting your. Uh, but since Chuss hasn't been here all summer, I was trying to avoid talking about the Steelers because if I talk about the Steelers, it's going to come off as super negative. And so mm. this is going to be a Steelers heavy episode coming back. We're, we're not going to always be super into the Steelers and we're going to talk about some other teams a little bit. But first, I think we're like required by NFL law to talk about Brandon Ayuk. Because that's also going to lead us into the Steelers because we've heard over the last 24 hours, first of all, Pretty Ricky 213, who I have mentioned before, who's like a private, calls himself the People's Insider. He has held on strong for like the last week that Brandon Ayuk is going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. And all the insiders were like, nope, no trade is happening. Well, then all of a sudden last night, a bunch of the insiders were like, Hey, okay, a uh, trade might be happening, but it's with the Browns and or the Patriots, and Brandon Ayuk has to pick. Well, the, now today they're back to, oh, okay, the Steelers might actually be in it as well. So, Chuss, your team could be in for this guy right here, and uh, it's, just it's just wondering true. how you're feeling. Well, I don't want to jump the gun yet because obviously I feel like it's very soon before we can really, you know, jump anything because obviously. You know, two days ago, it was Steelers. You know, the Steelers are going to get Brandon Ayuk one way or another. I mean, we talked about this months ago that Brandon Ayuk and this for the Pittsburgh Steelers would be a great wide receiver in our scheme. However, nothing ever really formulated. It almost seemed like everything that the Steelers like dreamed of, like us as fans wanted, actually ended up coming, you know, into our lives because everybody wanted to get rid of Pickett. We got rid of Pickett. We got Fields. Everybody wanted Fields. We wanted Ross. We got Ross. I, like almost everything just seemed way too good to be true. And Brandon Ayuk was always that guy that people were talking about back in the spring as a possible candidate to be a landing point in Pittsburgh. However, what ended up being, you know, one of the big concepts here is that, you know, San Francisco still had a deal. And it wasn't one of those con conversations with, you know, similar to Justin Fields, you know, you still have to trade for him. Russell Wilson, it was just a matter of signing a contract and getting a deal done. However, when it comes to Brandon Ayuk, now, after months of not hearing any trade rumors or anything like that with Brandon Ayuk, we are now going into preseason this week. We versed the Texans on Friday, and there's these rumors going on about Brandon Ayuk. 
going to Pittsburgh. And honestly, I don't necessarily buy it just yet. I think he'd be a great addition to Pittsburgh. I really do. I think he would be awesome. Not that I don't like George Pickens because I do, but I really think we need some wide receiver help. I, I really, I like Roman Wilson, but right now he's hurt. So I can't really evaluate him too well. I mean, he looked okay in camp. I mean, obviously, like I said, he's been in a boot, got out of the boot. Now he's working back towards, you know, playing again. But I think that it would be nice to have a little bit more veteran help having a Brandon Ayuk who has been in the league multiple years and obviously having George Pickens, who's still relatively young, still trying to get his, you know, his feet wet in the league. You know, he's only been here like a couple years. So it, it would be really nice to have some sort of veteran presence in that offense, especially when you have uh, Russell Wilson, who is also a veteran and doesn't, you know, really have, not that he wouldn't want to work with the young guys, but I know obviously he's going to want some sort of veteran uh, talent as well to help, continue pushing. But if I, if it was me, I would love to get Brandon Ayuk, but the cost is something that Omar Khan is going to have to evaluate because right now it seems like the costs from what I've seen, I think I've seen for the Patriots, it's Kendrick Bourne plus picks. And I think for um, uh, the Browns, it's Amari Cooper and picks. And I feel like somebody also said somewhere, I don't know if there's truth to this, truth to this, but it was high Mark or not high Mark. Hi, Smith. Hi, Mark is uh, a gate at PPG Paints Arena. <laughs> this is where the Penguins play. But Hi, Smith, Alex Hi, Smith plus picks was what the 49ers were asking for initially. Now, I don't know what's changed or if that's even true, but that was a possibility. So I don't know. I mean, I'd love to see him here, but also I don't know how much we'd be willing to pay him once his contract expires. So he might only be like one of those grabbing dumps by you know week eight but we'll see we'll see i don't know i don't know i'd love to have them though well so that's part of the issue with this trade or with this yeah it's, it's going to be a trade but not only is it a straight up trade for the team but you also have to end up paying him presumably yeah and it has to be a team that brandon Ayuk is willing to sign an extension with I think he would be willing to sign an extension. I mean, I'm pretty sure that he wants to come here. I mean, everything that I've read is pretty much pointing in the direction that Brandon Ayuk wants to come here. But the problem that I have is coming into this off season, we also have a quarterback issue that we have to address because Russell Wilson's only on a one year deal and Justin Fields, contract is also up at the end of the season. So, I mean, we have, we also have to figure out what we're doing with the, with the quarterback. If we're going to sign either do a contract extension. I'm assuming we will, but we also have to do that. We also have to worry about Brandon Ayuk, who obviously, you know, may not get the same precedence that a quarterback might, because obviously I believe Omar Khan and the Steelers have always kind of been in that same mindset that wide receivers are very replaceable. We always get dropped. We always drop wide receivers and stuff. So I believe that if they don't think Brandon Ayuk's, you know, producing compared to like a George Pickens, they might just you know, dump him and just roll with like a Roman Wilson or drop another wide receiver next year. So, I, I mean, I feel like with an extension, it, he would really have to be worth it in the offense. He would really have to be a boom player because even if he's like borderline not good or bust, like there, there's no way that the Steelers are going to resign him. But I mean, I don't know. It, it's really there's a lot with him. No, Mark Hunt is a GM. He doesn't mess around. I mean, he, he he's he's crazy. You know, I, I think it's I think he's crazy, but in a good way. I really like Omar Khan. Are you of the opinion that Brandon Ayuk could be like a wide receiver one in the Steelers offense? Because there's a lot of people who are saying he's a system wide receiver, which everyone on the San Francisco 49ers, except for like Christian McCaffrey, kind of suffers from that when they're in that system because it's just such a great team. It's the Avengers of football. Do you think like, I mean, Amari Cooper giving that up for Brandon Ayuk, that's a lot. That's saying you're putting a lot of faith in Brandon Ayuk to kind of have that similar sort of production. Do you think he could do that with the Steelers? I mean, I think he could definitely have a very similar production that he could in, in, in similar to San Francisco. I mean, he might even get more targets than he does in San Francisco. I mean, eh, when you look at it from an outside perspective, you obviously in San Francisco have Debo and Brandon Ayuk, two really phenomenal wide receivers on both sides of the ball. Like you said, it's an Avengers team in San Francisco. But the problem is, is one one player is going to suffer in certain games. I mean, Brandon Ayuk popped off against the Steelers last year, but then the following week or weeks after Brandon Ayuk was non-existent. And then you have Debo Samuel popping off or Christian McCaffrey 
getting 35 points and everybody else getting maybe five or six fantasy points, meaning in calculations, because I know some people get mad when I use fantasy points as a way of calculating Christian McCaffrey gets three touchdowns and 150 yards rushing or, and a hundred yards, you know, receiving. And he just has a monster game where it ends up being like 50 freaking fantasy points. Then, and Debo has four catches for 40 yards, which I guess wouldn't be that bad. I mean, you're looking at like eight points if you're in a PPR league, but not, 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 I'm not talking about fantasy fantasy hasn't even, I haven't even done any drafts yet, but when it comes to the Steelers, when it comes to the Steelers, when it comes to Brandon, Ayuk, I think he could say, similarly have the same production because George Pickens would probably go into that role as a wide receiver one. I think he would do well in that role or they could irreversibly change them and put Brandon, Ayuk at wide receiver one, put George Pickens at wide receiver two. And depending on what the, uh, Ar- what uh, Arthur Smith wants to do in his offense, which if he does anything similar to what he did in Tennessee, it's going to be very, very wonky. I mean, not that wonky is <laughs> bad, but like it's going to be all over the place. So, I mean, I think he could thrive, but it, I, I mean, I feel like it's too soon to tell because in a Matt Canada offense, I would say he wouldn't thrive because nothing, not, nothing thrives in a Matt Canada offense. But, um, but I think he could definitely work well. Now in, in Cleveland, on the other hand, I, I mean, that, that could be a different story. I mean, you're getting rid of one of your top wide receivers to get another top wide receiver. I mean, Amari Cooper did really, really well last year, but now you're putting all your faith in Brandon Ayuk, who has one year left on his contract. You'd have to re-sign him. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, if I was Cleveland, I, I wouldn't, but I mean, if unless you're really confident that your team can ring chase this year, then I'm all for it. I mean, if he goes to New England, I mean, uh, it's going to take a couple years, but I mean, I, th- I think Pittsburgh would be a good spot for him. But I think I think we'll get him. I think we would utilize him well, and I think he would produce well. I mean, he may not be the same crazy breakout player that he was in San Francisco, but I mean, he's still probably going to be like an eight and ten touchdown player. You know, I mean, that's pretty consistent. Okay, well, we will keep, and by we I mean me, uh, keep watching that. Uh, It's really all the NFL insiders have been posting about today is different Brandon Ayuk updates including that uh, Christian McCaffrey called him a former teammate in an interview. It looked like on accident. So uh, maybe Christian knows something. The rest of us don't. But sticking with the Steelers, and Chess, you alluded to this, you guys have two brand-new quarterbacks there in uh, Pittsburgh. You have the young, uh, the arguably more athletic Justin Fields, but then you also brought in – the meme master himself, Russell Mr. Wilson. Unlimited. Yes. Unlimited. So, I mean, coming into this, we were told that uh, Russell Wilson was the clear, clear starter. Like it was going to be him. We knew that. Now I've been reading. I've been seeing some stuff that says it might be closer than what we thought initially. And Russell Wilson did have a little, he had a little, I think it was, I think it was a calf injury. He was jogging back to the locker room and it cramped up. He got, got a little hurt. So uh, what are we, what's, what's the vibes in Pittsburgh? Give me the, give me the lowdown. What, what are people feeling? I mean, in Pittsburgh, I mean, it's it, at least through the people that I've talked to, I feel like most people have come to the consensus that, you know, Justin Fields is probably going to end up being the guy at some point. However, nobody is really second guessing the idea that Russell Wilson is going to start for us in Pittsburgh. I I really think the idea of what's going into this season is that Russell Wilson is pretty much guaranteed starter, regardless of what he looks like in camp. I mean, I feel like that was from the get go. I mean, we talked about this back in February, Kenny Pickett, when he was here in Pittsburgh was going to be quarterback too. And that's how the whole turmoil happened. And now he's in Philadelphia, presumably maybe even going to get cut or QB three over there. That's very interesting as well. But nonetheless, when it comes to um, Russell Wilson, he was always kind of going to be deemed the starter, regardless of who the quarterback two was going to be. Now you have Justin Fields, on the other hand, who is younger and did, you know, I think he he's doing pretty well in camp. I, I, I do. I, I mean, some people think otherwise, but I think he's doing pretty well in camp. In Pittsburgh, I think most people are just, once again, under the assumption it's going to be Russell Wilson. I think it's going to be Russell Wilson to start out. And by start out, I mean, if he doesn't perform, like, for example, like Mitchell Trubisky did not perform well in 2022, and he got benched for Kenny Pickett. And I think the same thing would happen this year, where if Russell Wilson is just not performing for the first four weeks, and it's all defense like it was in 2022, it's going to be Justin Fields that goes in. And I I think Justin Fields, since he's doing that, doing those uh, first team reps and stuff, it really shows what he can do. I'm really 
confident in Justin Fields, truthfully. I mean, I, I don't remember what his stats were from last year, but it, I, do you remember by chance? It was like six. It was like, I know he had double digit touchdowns, which is more than Kenny Pickett. So, I mean, that's, that's already a plus, but, um, but yeah. let's say it's, let's say he had like 16 touchdowns. I mean, you know, that in the offense of Chicago, having 16 touchdowns with working with what you have and a really atrocious O-line, I mean, and no hate, uh, no hate Chicago. I mean, you guys already know that, but like, I, I, I think with a better O-line and with, you know, more weapons, I really think Justin Fields can thrive in the offense. And as for Russell, I think if he can stay healthy, he could be good. And if he actually like plays like he means it, then he actually could be really well. But I uh, starting to see a little bit of age in him with that one calf injury you mentioned literally being the first couple of days into training camp, which I, I should have known better. I should have known that he was going to get hurt, but whatever. I, I'm confident in fields, but I, I don't, I don't think anybody, uh, anybody here in Pittsburgh is really wavering on the idea that fields is going to start week one. It's going to be, it's going to be Wilson. So Justin Fields, just cause you asked his stats were, he had a 61.4, uh, completion percentage. He had 2,562 passing yards, 16 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. So I was right, 16 touchdowns. So that's that's your guy. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think I mean it's not great numbers, but I mean at least he's had you know some numbers. You know, at least it's better than. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I mean, you, I look, man. I, I'm a big. I'm still. I'm still a big Kenny Pickett supporter because of Pet. I mean, I, I always will be. But the problem that I have is like, like con- consi- considering the the way that his numbers looked last season, he was just not good. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I still don't know to this day if it's just Pickett and Matt Canada, if it's just Matt Canada, or if it was just Pickett. We'll never know because by the time that Matt Canada was out, we won what sixteen ten over you guys, I think. And then he had, it looked like he was going to have a breakout game against the Cardinals and then literally got a concussion and then never played again. So I, I'll, we'll never know. We'll never know what it was going to be really. Other than he had a 400 yard game against a beaten up Cincinnati secondary. I mean, it's just just how it is. So. Okay. Now final, final, like Steelers only thing that we've got here. That's fine. Your your rookies. We never got to talk about the Steelers draft. So, like, yeah. how are you feeling about the Steelers draft now that Not, I'm asking you four months later? Um, I'm still very, very excited about I mean, I was very excited with our draft as well. I, I really think that our linemen are going to be great. I think that the players that they got, the wide receiver, I think the linebacker, I think everybody that they've gotten is really good. However, I really, really think – that uh Peyton Wilson linebacker NC State is going to be a big breakout player that no one's going to be talking about as much as um as much as our O-line and and Roman Wilson I feel like a lot of people are talking about Roman Wilson a lot I I, not that I don't like Roman Wilson I think he's going to be really good but I feel like a lot of people are talking about him and nobody's talking about the other Wilson that we drafted and that being Peyton Wilson, who obviously, honestly, probably should have been, I'm pretty sure, drafted a lot higher than he was, but because of injuries and stuff, dropped his draft stock. And getting him now, he's in a, from what I read, and like I said, Steelers fans, I I don't know what you guys are reading compared to what I'm reading, but what I read was that he's going to be in a similar rotation to how Joey Porter Jr. was when when he was in that rookie year cornerback situation last year where he was like cornerback three and then kind of ended up working his way up to cornerback one apparently what they're going to do is they're going to put Peyton in that same spot with like Patrick Queen and Roberts and if either of those guys get injured Wilson will have more of a jump more of like a start and then if one of them doesn't perform well or isn't performing as well as they would hope they would slide in Wilson just kind of like how uh you know Joey Porter Jr really got to shine towards the end of the season where he went from cornerback 3 you know cornerback 4 not really starting did a couple reps during a season game and then all of a sudden at the end of the season you're always hearing his name and i think that's what's going to happen with Peyton Wilson i i genuinely think if that guy can stay healthy and like that injury that he had i believe it was what an ACL tear it was something pretty bad but if he, if if he if he can stay healthy i genuinely believe that he might actually be like a steal. I genuinely think he'll be a steal. Now, Roman Wilson, I think he can be good as well. He's just injured, and I, I just didn't really want to highlight him because I feel like everyone's highlighting him. I, I know the dude's going to be good. Uh, he's just he's just hurt right now, and, I, I, I you know, if he plays on Friday, it would be really exciting to see what he's going to be like. And then um, 
and then our lineman who I, I just don't want to butcher his name, but you know, you know who I, I know the other one's Frazier, but I, I fought this fought, one. Yeah. Fought, fought Troy Feutanu, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Feutanu. Yeah. That, that guy. I, 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 yeah. Call me a fake, call me a fake Steelers fan for that. I just, I just never really tried to pronounce his name. I apologize for that. I really like his tattoo as well. It's very, very awesome. It reminds me so, of Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. Troy, Troy Feutanu was someone who I was interested in the Bengals drafting. Um, but I don't think he'll end up being a tackle personally. I think the Steelers would, I could be completely wrong, but I think the Steelers would be better off using him as a guard, which I don't mm-hmm. know if the Steelers need a guard. Um, if that's been a big issue for you, I know that's probably the weakest spot for the Bengals now with Cordell Volson. I think uh, Tro- Troy Feutanu's arms are a bit too short to play tackle. Um, he he can play tackle. So, like, if your tackle got injured for a game or two, he could probably go in and you'd be okay. But I think his starting position should really be guard in my yeah, – I mean, opinion. yeah, I, I don't think that you're wrong, but I know that I've been reading. I just double-checked myself for, uh, for, for Feutanu. Um, he is supposed to play right tackle. So yeah. he is. it's going to be Broderick Jones to play left and Troy to play right tackle. And it's going to be at least for the preseason. So, I mean, that obviously could change. Maybe we'll see something drastic come Friday. But, you know, right now that's looking like what it's going to be. So, I mean, we'll see. But, I mean, it's going to be cool to see them out there because they're going to be rookies and they're going to be, you know, trying to play and prove their worth and they're, definitely both really good linemen so i'm excited and, to see what they bring to the table and you guys did draft an actual guard too out of south dakota state i'm uploading his photo here right now and that's mason mccormick yeah so uh i mean he was another guy who i had on my mock drafts for the Bengals as well just because like i said we needed a guard he was a late round guy um along with zach frazier who's a center so i mean you guys drafted a lot of o-line so mm-hmm. um Sounds like Peyton Wilson is your main guy you're looking to see during the preseason game mm-hmm. against um, – who do you guys play? Is it the Texans? Yeah, we play the Texans on Friday. Okay. Yeah. So is there anyone on the O-line who you're going to be watching specifically? Like I want to see this guy in the preseason and see if he can hold up. I mean, I, I'm definitely excited for uh, Frazier. I mean, I, I, I expect a lot from Troy, obviously. I mean, he's, he's our first-round pick. But I feel like with me, and I'm sure with you as well, you kind of like to check out those guys that are, you know, second, third, fourth round guys to see how they, you know, you know, do well in our like how well they do in our offense or defense. And in this, I would say Frazier because people were saying at one point in the draft back in April, people were saying that Frazier could be better than Troy. And I was like, I feel like that could be a stretch. So I'm I'm excited to see maybe Frazier does pop off, and it'd be really cool to see him do really well. I'm, I'm really excited to also see if, if Roman Wilson is healthy to see how well his reps go as well. Um, McCormick would be interesting too. I just don't know how they're going to fit him in his scheme. I haven't really read a whole lot about what he's been doing. So it looks like I, I looked up some articles earlier today and they just, and one of the articles that popped up was from April that said how he fits into the scheme. So, I mean, there's really not nobody talking about it. So maybe he'll be a good person to look for, but I, I just think our O-line as a whole, depending on who they put in will be really interesting. But uh, Peyton Wilson, I'm very excited to see. I, I, I As soon as we drafted him, reading about him and hearing about him, getting him at third round, I mean, it, it could be one of those players where he could end up being more of a – he could be more of a boomer bust just in the idea that if he's hurt or gets hurt a lot, we'll never see his full potential. Or if he is good when he's healthy and then bad when he's hurt, then, you know, is it worth keeping him around, you know, so – Okay, well, that's our rundown on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've caught up on the whole summer now. We know everything. Yeah, I mean, for the most, yeah, for for the most part. I mean, I also had the super awesome opportunity to do photography for uh, the Cam Hayward uh, softball game. So I actually got to be up in uh, close and personal with uh, Cam Hayward and Roman Wilson and all those guys as well. So cool seeing them do a softball charity event for the Hayward House as well. So I was very thankful for that opportunity. Okay, shout out Cam Hayward. In the Hayward House, uh, I don't know what their cause is. Do you want to like? Uh, I mean, money go towards. Uh, it's it's cancer, I believe. So I mean, okay. it's all yeah, it's all cancer related. 
curing uh, cancer. Yeah. I, the Hayward house is, I'm trying to, I'm going to look it up so that I, I don't botch it, but I, um, the Hayward house for, uh, Cam Hayward is uh, dedicating and impacting the lives of today's youth. So I might have been a little bit off on that. But um, but yeah, so he definitely he's doing some stuff for the Hayward House. And uh, they were doing they were raising some some money for for the foundation. So. Okay. Well, shout out Cam Hayward and the Hayward House, whatever your cause is, I'm sure it's good. Well, no, I mean, it's definitely to help the youth, but I, I feel like they do more than just you know, it's supporting the youth of now, but like it's it's supposed to be. I, I thought there was like more to it. I thought there was going to be a place where it like would tell a little bit like what we do. Ah, uh, here we go. I got you. Causes. Here we go. We can get to the causes if it'll actually work. Uh, while while you're doing while uh, while I look this up, um, you can go ramble about the Bengals or something. Actually, I was going to start rambling about the Bengals. So uh, I've, I've already talked about the Bengals a lot, obviously. For, so they, uh, all right, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> but so what do we do? So what they do is they, they're involved with, uh, yeah, really helping the youth and stuff. Fighting cancer is one of the things that they do. I always associate most of this stuff with cancer, which it was true. They, they work with fighting with cancer, which two of their initiative is Voices of Hope Scholarship, which is uh, – I believe with one for it's a scholarship with cancer and the Pittsburgh is stronger than cancer, which is a whole Pittsburgh initiative that they do with the penguins as well. Uh, supporting students and teachers, childhood literacy, suiting up for success, childhood hunger and Craig's closet, which is all about more or less um, helping get those kids in need, the clothing that they deserve. So it's, it's, it's a very good charity. I definitely recommend you guys looking up on it. It, mo it does more than just do one thing, but every time that I hear about it, I always think of the cancer initiative that they do. They always do a lot with cancer. So, but yeah, they, they did a uh, charity softball event back in July. Uh, and I was very thankful to be a part of the photography process for it. So it's a good thing. Okay. Go ahead with your bangles. Shout out Hayward house. And now I'm going to pull myself back up on the screen here. There we go. Okay, so I've obviously talked about the Bengals all summer. If there was any story that came out about the Bengals, I pretty much made a video about it. So we don't need to spend a lot of time on this. Other than you watch you watch a ton of college football, so I kind of want to get your opinions on some guys that you may have heard of, and if you haven't heard of them, that's fine. We, we won't talk about them. Okay. But I think you've heard of this first guy. If you haven't, I would be shocked. And that is Amarius Mims, the Bengals' first-round pick. Mm. So the way I'm looking at this man, this big six-foot-eight giant, is that he's raw. He he doesn't have a lot of experience, but he's super athletic. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that a this guy is going to make or break Frank Pollock's career, our uh, offensive line coach, because if he messes up this guy's career. I think he's gone, but also I think Amarius Mims is so raw with su such a high ceiling. I think he could either be the best player in this NFL draft or he's going to be an absolute bust and there's no in between. So what have you seen from the Georgia standout? Um, if anything, and what do you think about the Bengals picking this guy up? Uh, first of all, when the Bengals picked him, I was very mad because I wanted him, but I'm very happy with uh, Troy. So, you know, no hate, but I do believe that I think he is a great guy. Like you said, he's, he's very high on the ceiling. He played really well with Georgia, or at least from what I saw, he played really well at Georgia dude, like is a freakishly tall guy. Six foot eight is huge. He's a big man. You can pretty much use him relatively universally. I think he's going to be a really good player. And I, yeah, I genuinely thought he was really good with Georgia. I mean, he's been a part of such a great team that, you know, he was definitely one of the shining parts of that line. And, I mean, they always talked about Mims and all of the guys on that Georgia line. So I really think that he is a big breakout guy that could really bring a lot to your offensive line that I know you've been kind of concerned about over the last couple of years, I could probably say, just because 
um, even just years before that. But I, I know Joe Burrow has been getting hurt a lot and you don't want to keep him getting hurt. So having Mims in that line as maybe even your your focal point of the line would be very helpful considering he, I don't know how, how long is his wingspan? Do you know? I, I don't know. I'm sure he's got a pretty big wingspan. He could probably, I'm pretty sure he can do two at once, two or he's done a lot of crazy stuff. I know he has, because so is Broderick Jones, who also came from Georgia. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head what his wingspan is, but I, I like that he doesn't have to start right away because um, they did also bring in um, Trent Brown mm-hmm. as a guy who's also six foot eight. Orlando yeah. Brown Jr. is also six foot eight on the other side, so we've got a bunch of six foot eight guys now, big boys. And uh, Amarius Mims has been looking really good in training camp, and I think that there's just a worry with injury. And if he, but if he can stay healthy. I think Amarius Mims shows a ton of promise, and I hope Joe Burrow doesn't have to worry about getting sacked anymore because he uh, is standing upright and he's throwing deep bombs in mm-hmm. the game. And he also look. Speaking of Joe Burrow, he looks like freaking uh, Cody Rhodes or Slim Shady or I don't know, just yeah. Yes, he does. Why did he did he ever say why he did that? Has he admitted to it? Yes, he gave a very good reason for it. What? What is it? I want change. No. I want a change. What? What is this his reason? He got There's bored. No... He got bored. Wow. <sighs> nah, I think he looks more like Cody, but that's fine. What, what 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 am I supposed to say to this? What am I supposed to say to this? Josh, are you speaking right now? Because I cannot hear you, and I don't know if it's my earbuds or if it's just that everything crashed as soon as you put up Joe Burrow and Eminem. If you can hear me, take off the picture. Okay, I don't know if Josh can hear me anymore. I think we lost Josh. Not sure what what happened here just oh hello josh i kind of heard you okay just we're back okay what happened did i lose connection or did you lose connection so i was just telling the people on the audio side of things they're getting a little behind the scenes look i tried to get um back on the video stream but you are back you are back um what is the last thing you heard me say (laughs) Uh, that Joe Burrow was bored. Yeah, so Joe Burrow said he was bored, so he decided that uh, if Eminem was going to kill Slim Shady, he was going to bring him back. And so uh, that's why we have Joe, Cody, Slim. There was like something like Slim Cool or something that fans came up with for his new nickname. But Hmm. yeah, that's why uh, Joe Burrow is now blonde and uh, with... Without a uh, hair, <laughs> yeah. But also, BJ Hill promised if I guess he told Joe if he actually went through with it, he would do it. So now BJ Hill has the same look as well. Interesting. So, uh, so you said you just like lost audio connection, or am I just like my internet connection dropped for some reason? Uh, okay, I, don't, I don't know why. So my ear, the reason I was concerned is because I even said it in the mic, and you'll hear this. I was I was unsure if like my earbuds had given out because. These earbuds aren't that good, um, and I'm kind of like holding, like you can't see my other hand because I'm like kind of holding it together because when I don't hold it, um, I can't hear you. So uh, it's just how it is. I mean, because I couldn't find my other pair, so I had these ones in. And at first, I was just like Josh, Josh, and then at one point, I was like uh, Josh, if you can, uh, if you can hear me, change the picture. And you didn't. So I just was like, okay, so, so he's gone. He's gone. So it's not me, but, but yeah. All right. 
but uh yeah he he does look like um he does look like slim shady he came at a really uh ironic time you know there's a lot of uh baby beach blonde buzz cut dudes making waves including eminem with the death of slim shady as well as big big name cody rhodes when finishing the story back in april against the final boss and the tribal chief and stuff for any wrestling fans i've been very into wrestling recently and baseball i've, I've had a lot of different hobbies that haven't consisted of football over the last couple of months so it's been pretty interesting that's because uh jelly roll is out there at jelly roll was smacking a town down under with a freaking steel chair at SummerSlam that i was at at cleveland brown stadium so that was pretty interesting uh day trip up to cleveland second time at brown stadium can't can't give a comparison to uh paycor or anything like that yet but i, I will say that uh i, I do I, I might be biased but i, I do i do like akashur stadium better than uh brown stadium but i do like i do like lincoln financial stadium or lincoln financial field pretty a lot but that that, that, that has nothing to do with anything continue on josh well, I was just, I mean, I was just going to say, you know, just kind of recovering from uh, that. And I think the YouTube people are going to get you behind the scenes, the Spotify and Apple podcast audio people are going to get me behind the scenes. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Yeah. But um, moving on from Amarius Mims and Joe Burrow's blondness, where we were at to another guy who I actually did make a pre-draft video about and that's Jermaine Burton. Um, and in the video, I actually thought that he would a be a good pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. And that is because I think he's super talented. I think he's super athletic. He's going to be a great deep threat for the Bengals up the middle, in my opinion. But he did he does have some uh, personality issues. And that was something I thought Mike Tomlin might be better at kind of reining in than Zach Taylor. It's, it's looking like Zach Taylor's been able to kind of, you know, keep him calm down, keeping him from hitting uh players there haven't been any fights at camp yet that i'm aware of so um i'm excited for jermaine burton i there's there's a wide receiver three battle going on which it's always great when you've got guys fighting for that wide receiver three position it's between him and andre yoshivas so i mean burton's good though i mean burton's pretty solid burton burton's fast mm -hmm. or he's that's quick funny. he's quick off the line and that's where he gets i think him and T and Jamar could be dangerous, but I also think Yoshi and T and Jamar could be dangerous. And I, I'm working on a video where I think where I've got who should win that wide receiver three battle. And it might, I'm going to get a little bit of a different spin on it. Though. What happened to Trent Irwin? Is he still on the team? Trent Irwin is still on the team. He's uh, going to be, and tr this has always kind of been Trent Irwin's position. He uh, is just that guy who comes in and is super dependable when there's an injury. So if Jamar or T or even Jermaine Burton gets injured for one or two games, uh, Trent Irwin's that guy who can come in and be reliable for a few catches, uh, maybe get a touchdown or two. So I, I think he's he knows his role. He's very good in his role. And uh, I'm not sure he's necessarily even in that wide receiver three battle. Yeah, I, I was just curious. I mean, I but going to Burton, I – I can never not think about his breakout game, his freaking monster game where he uh, literally shredded Texas A&M. I, I will never forget that. Um, let me look this up real quick. Uh, yeah, 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 Texas A&M, October 7th, nine receptions, 197 yards, two touchdowns, shredded. But, yeah, Burton, Burton's a good player. He finished with almost, excuse me, almost uh, 10 touchdowns. He finished with eight. And I don't remember how many yards he finished with. He finished with under 1,000 as well. But he was also with Alabama. I'm correct. So, and I am, but I, yeah, I, I know that I'm <laughs> correct, but uh, he was with Alabama and he was really good. And I mean, obviously you have a lot of different weapons in Alabama. So to have almost a thousand yards receiving and having some really multiple hundred uh, over a hundred yards receiving games, it's pretty good. So I think Burton's going to be a good player for you guys. And if you guys don't utilize him correctly, um, he's going to shine somewhere else. So you better, you better uh, utilize him correctly. I mean, he might be he might be a good, and I, I know you don't want to hear this, but he might genuinely be a really good T. Higgins replacement if that time comes that T's no longer with your team. I I mean, so let's let's face the music here. I do think this is T's final season with the Cincinnati Bengals, but I really I really think uh, Yoshi is going to be a better T. Higgins replacement, which could mm -hmm. even open up that wide receiver three spot for uh, 
Jermaine Burton next season to come in. But let's get past this season first, where we're at, and see what uh, we got. Let's get T. Higgins a Super Bowl ring and send him off into the limelight. Well, uh, what about the what about the Kansas City Chiefs? You know, they're going to win another one. You're going to three. No, no, they're not. They're not. It's not happening. I refuse yeah. to acknowledge that. They're going to three peat. Crazy, nope. right? You know what? I've just accepted that Kansas City is just going to be like me playing Carolina in Retro Bowl. We have won 68 Retro Bowls in the last 115 years. So that's just Kansas City. We cannot allow the Swifties to win. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, we can't. But, I mean, hey, maybe that won't be the talk of the town. She's not on tour anymore. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe all the hype will die down. Last year it made sense because she was just coming off like the first wave of her tour, and she did her second leg of her tour, and there's like a million shows, and she was all in the news. Now she's not in the news. There's no way she's going to tour this year or even announce a tour next year. Like she just came off a huge tour, so maybe, maybe there won't be as much NFL hype around her this year. I mean, that's just me. We'll see. We'll see. I doubt it, but I, I, we'll see. We'll see. So next guy, next guy. I want to I want want to get your opinion on it. Someone who he's going to have to fight to make the fifty three man roster, but he's someone. This is who I'm going to be paying attention to in preseason. He's a late he's a late round draft pick. I think he was like the fifth round, sixth round pick. Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona University. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea about anything about this guy. My he friend. is I, a tight end. Broke Rob Gronkowski's records there um he's 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 raw I'll, I'll get he needs some work but i mean i i really think he is the Bengals' best bet on the roster currently to have a guy who is both good at catching and uh blocking we haven't had a guy who's good at that for a while we had mike gasecki really good catcher not a great blocker we have drew sample not great at catching great at blocking tanner hudson practice squad guy. And then we have two rookie tight ends and Eric all has injury issues. Um, he just got cleared. So he's good there, but um, we'll see if he stays healthy. And then we have Tanner McLaughlin. So I'm rooting for Tanner Mack. And you said you have, you you haven't heard of him. You don't know anything. About I, him. I just looked him up just because I really don't know too much about him. He looks like he played at Southern Utah for three years. So that, that would make sense. And he finished out his career at Arizona for two years. Uh, I think it's pretty impressive that he broke a bunch of Rob Gronkowski's records. I thought initially it was going to be like a Kenny Pickett situation where it took him five years to break all the records instead of three or four. But it looks like it took him, I guess, two technically, which is pretty impressive. But I will say the one thing that does scare me about him for you guys is he is 25. That is true. So not that he wouldn't make the roster, but he might not be a long-term investment for you guys. You might only be able to have him four years and then he might deteriorate as a tight end. I mean, it's just tight ends take a lot of wear and tear. So you just gonna have to be a little, little weary about the age and stuff. I mean, that's with any player, but I feel like, especially with somebody like a tight end, it, it's, you, you kind of have to see how well they do and how well they produce. I mean, freaking what out uh, what antonio gates how, how long did he play in the nfl for i mean he was insane tight end but how will 37 38 i mean you might get something like him out of tanner but like you you also might only get like a 33 year old you know right. yeah no he's my he's my jordan battle this year though he's my random dude who i just feel in my heart he's gonna do well whoa whoa, 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 whoa. oh you felt you felt jordan battle first but then like oh, your heart yeah. spoke to my yeah. heart okay because i was gonna say i'm like there's no way that you mm -hmm. It, you were like Jordan Battle is the guy. I had to make you believe that Jordan no, Battle was the guy. Your heart spoke to my heart, and then I was like, you know what? We need this guy. Speaking of which, where's your Jordan Battle jersey? Uh, I shirt, 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 shirt. You lost a bet. I haven't gotten it yet. I really haven't worked too much this summer, so I have to wait until I start working. So, which will be in a couple of weeks. So, I will be getting it. I will be getting it during football season. You'll see me wearing it on one of the shows. Um, you know, and it has to be, we said bangles, right? It's not, I, I, I can't yes, get away with an Alabama. A, no, it has to be a Jordan battle t-shirt from the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. Fine. Fine. The money has to go towards paying for Jamar Chase's extension. So it has to be a licensed shirt. None of this unlicensed crap. 
Okay, well, I'm, well, I want a licensed shirt. I'm going to get something that says Battle on the back. I mean, I'm not going to get some goofy Etsy graphic that has Jordan Battle with a bunch of tigers around it. It's going to be, it's going to have a bangle, some sort of Bengals logo on it. I, I don't know what's available right now. Some sort of Bengals logo on it, some sort of orange, black, or white, or whatever. And it's going to say Battle on the back. So don't you worry. No jersey, though, because he didn't get a pick six or a fumble scoop six. It was just a pick in the last game of the season. So, yeah, I. Bengals playing the Bucks on Saturday. We'll see what happens, but I'm hoping Tanner McLaughlin gets some playing time and I get to. Uh, what would you do if the Bucks beat you guys 37 to six? In the preseason? Yeah. Probably not really care. I mean, I mean, why are they beating us? You know, like, um, are they beating us because they played all their starters and we played like our entire fourth string? I, I don't know. I was just wondering. I don't uh, know. I was yeah, just wondering. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't mean anything. It's just really... yeah, it's completely meaningless. I mean, if the Bengals win fifty-four to zero, though, I mean, it's very clear that we're making the Super Bowl this year. Uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. Good point. I mean, I mean, I, mean I, 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 hey, listen, man, Steelers fans and myself, I guess we were all teased by Kenny Pickett last year with how well he performed in the, in the freaking preseason. So, I mean, I'll, I'll you know, you, you'll understand how we feel whenever you guys come off of the three and zero preseason. What if we go zero and three? And you guys are gonna go like Ravens. to the Super Bowl. You guys are gonna get to the Super Bowl. It's over. Yeah, you guys are on the Super Bowl. Or, is or, it the or, Ra- or you the guys Ravens are gonna lose in the AFC Championship to the Kansas City Chiefs because they'll actually beat you this time <laughs> again. Moving on to the Indianapolis Colts, who are another team we talk about, but haven't done a great job of actually talking about this. Uh, off-season. Our apologies. Our apologies. This, this Sunday, they play the Denver Broncos. Oh, uh, I cannot wait to see Bo Nix play. I am so excited. <laughs> I actually am so excited to see Bo Nix play. He, he, he is on – I have a sleeper league, and I drafted him first round. I am so excited for Bo Nix. I think he is going to be great. I think it's going to be great. I, I, I don't believe in Zach Wilson. I don't believe in him. It's going to be Bo Nix, baby. Bo Nix over in Denver. Sorry. What about uh, Jarrett Stidham? Uh, he's the starter over there. I don't, I, I think it's, I think eventually it's going to be Bo. Uh, I'm excited to see what Bo does. I don't know that he has, he, he's projected points in sleeper. So, and, and sleeper, <laughs> so, I mean, that means that he's, he could start. So, so do you think, I guess real quick, before we talk about the Colts, do you think Bo Nix was like picked at a uh, good spot in the draft? Cause Oh, I think I think everybody just went pan. I think everybody in that in that draft panicked. I, I don't genuinely think any of those quarterback picks were that good, other than like Caleb Williams, you know, and all of the ones that like. I mean, some of it made sense, but some. But as you started seeing like Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix and all these guys started getting picked like after another, and you're like, whoa, 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 what what is happening? And um, I, I feel like some of it just did not make a lot of sense. I don't remember where Bo Nix got picked at though. What what? I'm going to look up the 2024 draft real quick because we never really talked about it too much. Um, I just wanted to see. He was 12th overall. I he was 12th. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. But, I yeah, mean, it went, It went. what, Caleb Williams? Oh, what? what is happening? Yeah, so we when this draft went down, we were. I was at a wedding, and – we were all in an Airbnb and all the guys are watching the draft and like all these quarterbacks just started randomly falling and all the guys are like freaking out and the, a bunch of the girls rushing like, what is going on? And we're like, they just took Bo Nix overall. He's supposed to be a second round pick at the highest. And like, we're a bunch of yeah, us who had just was- met. We're all mad. And it was, it was great. Well, so like, I felt like Caleb Williams going first made sense. Jaden Daniels going second was pretty pretty easy pick right there and then drake may being picked third i thought was interesting i figured new england was going to take a quarterback anyway but then things started getting interesting because you had marvin marvin harrison get picked joe all malik neighbors and uh and uh jc what latham is that how you say it uh he's kind of yeah yeah yeah. okay and then from there you go you go penix for atlanta which i think is so funny and then you have jj mccarthy in minnesota the 10th and then Bo Nix at 12. And then there's just like no other quarterbacks. And you're just like, oh, okay. It was just the, I feel like, I feel like at that, at the end right there, like they had the top three get picked. They had Daniels, May, and 
uh, Williams. And then at the end with Atlanta, Minnesota and Denver, they all panicked and they were like, well, I don't know if we can wait. So as soon as like Atlanta was like Michael Penix Jr. And everyone was like, uh, Kirk Cousins was like, <laughs> whatever, dude. Okay. And then, and then, you, and then you have JJ McCarthy get picked right after Roma Dunsey. And then, uh, yeah, I don't think JJ McCarthy is going to be the answer over there. Bonix, baby. I'm, I'm big Bonix guy. I'm all for big him. Big Bonix guy. Okay. Well, um, the Colts were actually back going back to the Colts. Oh, the sorry Colts about that. We're the first team to take a defensive player in the 2024 NFL draft, and they took. Leatu Latu, who is, I think, currently right now on the unofficial depth chart, he is a backup. However, I'm hoping that means we get to see a little bit of Leatu Latu in the preseason. He is someone that I'm excited to watch. I think he uh, has a nice bull rush uh, type attitude. He did have some injury, but you know what? He got injured and he got medically retired by his first college team. And then he went and played rugby, which I, I, I've mentioned this in other YouTube videos, which I think is, I think is just crazy. And he was like, I'm not injured anymore. Goes to UCLA has a phenomenal uh, end to his college career. And then becomes the first defensive player picked in the NFL draft. I want to see some of him. He's someone who I'm excited to watch for the Indianapolis Colts and the Indianapolis Colts have been known for having great pass rushers in the past. Dwight Freeney just got inducted into the NFL hall of fame as a pass rusher for the Indianapolis Colts. So uh, kind of bringing back that for the defense. Um, do you have any thoughts on Leatu Latu? I think going yeah, to be yeah. killing Bo Nix. Yeah. I, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't hurt Bo Nix. Don't hurt him. You know, he needs to, he needs to be, he needs to be Denver's consistency. Uh, I really hope for the best for Denver, but as for Indianapolis for now, um, I think Layatu Latu is pretty good. He's a good edge rusher over in UCLA. I, I didn't really watch too much UCLA film over. I didn't really watch a lot of film out West this year. I mean, I mean, I, obviously we you had Washington and Oregon and all of those guys, but there wasn't a lot, of, a lot of things going on over there that I really, you know, I'm keeping closer to the ACC because obviously I'm a Pitt fan, as I've mentioned with Kenny Pickett multiple times. But you know, so I'm I'm focusing on what's going on over here at Florida State, and Georgia, and all those guys. But UCLA, he was a big standout. A lot of people were talking about him constantly. I thought that he was going to be a good player to be picked on some of these teams. And he ended up going to Indianapolis. Very happy for him. I think he's going to be a great player over there. And um, yeah, it'll be really exciting to see what he does against Denver. I, I want to see if he actually, you know, shows anything or if he shows nothing. Like, is that a fluke? I'm assuming it would be a fluke. But I, I'm I'm waiting for it. I I, I want to. I want to believe that he's going to have a pretty big, big game against Denver. I mean, I don't think Denver is that strong of a team yet. I, I think they need, I think they need a little bit of work. I don't think Denver, I personally don't think a lot of these teams are going to have any miracle stories like CJ Stroud and Houston, Houston Texans did last year. I, I just don't. I think a lot of these teams going into this year, I think are going to have some rebuilding to do. I mean, I, I do. I mean, other than Atlanta, I think Atlanta might actually be okay this year just because they have like Kirk cousins but i i don't think they're gonna but like i don't think like for example i don't think um jaden daniels i will go into washington and go 11 and 6 i mean maybe maybe i'll be wrong i mean i would love to see jane daniels pop off but i i can't see it so yeah. but i'm just doing that based off since stroud got picked what second last year yeah so i'm just gonna but i mean I don't know. I think Jane Daniels will be more more likely to pop off than Caleb Williams will this year. But I'm not talking about quarterbacks. I'm talking about Layout to Latu. I am talking about him. I think he's going to be great. I'm excited to see how he plays this coming weekend. So uh, big fan of big fan of him from what you've told me, what I've seen, and um, what I've heard from him. But I obviously haven't done as much in depth as like a Mims or even uh, Burton. So. You know, this this team, this Indianapolis Colts team, I think is going to be a sleeper team because they almost made the playoffs last year. That dropped pass that put the Texans into the playoffs instead of the Colts. You know what? That's okay, but they had Gardner Minshew starting most of the season. Let's let's give a guy who we did not give any credit to last offseason, Anthony Richardson. I think if he stays healthy, this offense has the chance to be one of the most versatile and dynamic offenses in the entire National Football League. Because not only do they have this guy, they also now have Jonathan Taylor coming off of 
an actual off season where he's not injured slash possibly faking an injury slash holding out slash going through contract negotiations. So they've got those two. Then they've got Michael Pittman Jr. They have Josh Downs coming off of a great rookie year. And they drafted this guy, A.D. Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell. Another great pick, I think. And this, out of Texas, again, I know he's not an ACC guy. He might not be someone you're aware of. But he's someone who's similar to Jermaine Burton in a lot of ways. I think that he could be a good slot, uh, middle, deep threat. So they've had Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce is kind of a pure deep threat. He doesn't really do much unless he's wide open. I think A.D. Mitchell can be a guy who uh, he's a bit more dynamic. He's quicker. He's more agile. I really liked that pick for the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Um, How do you you feel? I know I kind of went through a lot of guys there real quick, but how did you kind of feel about that uh, Colts offense and what they're building with their picks and these new guys and even Jonathan Taylor just being healthy for once? Um, personally, I don't think people are talking too much about Indianapolis and it's scary because Anthony Richardson actually looked pretty good in the first two weeks before he got hurt. And, uh, I may, he made me eat my words. I genuinely didn't think Anthony Richardson was going to be that, that good of a guy, but that, that team is actually very, it was very surprising last year, given the circumstances of having Gardner Minshew. I mean, they barely missed playoffs last year. They almost won that division. They just lost to Houston who I'm very thankful. Houston did make playoffs because they ended up making some noise and I was really excited to watch them. But I think Indianapolis can make some sort of run this year for that division if Anthony Richardson stays healthy. As you mentioned, I mean, they got some great picks. On top of that, they have Jonathan Taylor, who is not faking an injury, not actually injured, not going through contract negotiations. You have an Anthony Richardson who's going to be healthy. You have, like, your co- your core quarterback that you were planning on playing last season that got hurt. You have Latu, Latu and you have this new wide receiver as well as Michael Pittman, Michael Pittman Jr. So I really think Indianapolis is going to be <laughs> showed him again. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's going to be a really. I think I think these this team is going to be a lot better than people are are expecting them to be. I, I I mean they might still finish in second, but I I don't think it's going to be like a eight and nine or a nine and eight type thing. I think they're going to be like a second place ten and seven team. Um, but that's just me. I mean, I feel like that division is going to be a lot more uh, impact heavy, more or less. I, I think. I think Tennessee is going to have to wait a little while. Um, the Tennessee is going to be an interesting team to watch for, and Jacksonville might be on the fall off here. So, which leaves perfect room for Indianapolis to jump into that second spot with like a ten and seven record, which could get them in the wild card, depending on how well the rest of the AFC teams do this year. I also want to, and there's no way. I, I don't think there's any way you know this guy. Maybe you do. But I want to shout out Craig Young, undrafted free agent uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana, near me. Um, he's trying to make the 53-man roster out of Kansas as a linebacker. Um, he was also at Ohio State for a little bit. But I just uh, wanted to give him a shout out, rooting for him to make the Indianapolis Colts because that would be a really cool story if he was able to do it um, as – Fort Wayne, Indiana guy playing for the professional team in Indiana. So just give a, give a brief shout out to that guy. It sounds like I've been talking to some people who have been going to the camp. They said that there might be a chance, but uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Um, I, I haven't been able to go to camp because I have a job. Unfortunately, you could still go to camp. Yeah, not, not with my hours. <laughs> yeah, you can still try. You know, I could, I could try, but, but yeah, shout out Craig Young. I, I hope you make the team dude, especially since Josh really likes his Fort Wayne guys. So I do like my Fort Wayne guys, except for, uh, well, I, I do like Drew Tranquil. I'm just mad at Drew Tranquil for winning a Super Bowl with the chiefs and then signing a three-year extension when he could have come to the Bengals. But, um, anyway, Chuss, I think we're, we're almost out of time. So was there any final words you had to say for your first time back in like five months? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to be back. I mean, like I said, life's been stressful over the last couple of months. I'm hoping that things slow down. I mean, I'm definitely not going to be more free going into the fall at all. But luckily, we have me and Josh talked about a new constructed schedule, which should work well with me and him as well. Both both his job is uh, with his job being very uh, demanding with his hours and whatnot. And with this being one of my final years of school. And on top of that, me having to work and do other photography, different gigs and stuff like that, I'm definitely going to be very busy. And I 
have made that quite apparent. But the luckily, luckily, the thing is, is we're going to be able to work through it to the fall. And uh, hopefully nothing crazy happens like we had last year. Hopefully you don't have any surgeries or situations that we have to deal with. And hopefully we can just enjoy football season with no, no uh, hurdles this year. But I'm very thankful for it. I'm very excited to see what happens. Uh, let's let's hope for a good preseason. Let's hope that there's not a lot of injuries on any sides of the ball because that really makes me sad when preseason injuries happen. But other than that, I'm excited to be back. That's that's what I got to say. Okay. Okay. So um, just to give a brief rundown, like Chuss mentioned, we do have a kind of a new schedule. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday is where when we're going to be recording these, Tuesday or Wednesday, not and. It's going to be one episode per week, and that's for these full episode things. I'll still be putting out the uh, supplemental kind of like, oh, this just happened videos. For example, if Brandon Ayuk were to get traded as soon as I hit end recording on this video, I would probably immediately start making a Brandon Ayuk uh, just got traded video, and I would post that on YouTube. Um, so if you're not subscribed to the YouTube already, you should be. But Chuss and I are going to meet up in, at least once a week to record a full episode, talk about the week, what we're excited for, what happened. Um, and also... Uh, Trust might be putting out supplemental videos as well. I don't know. I'm not going to promise anything for him. Uh, I'm not against it. I just don't know how to use Riverside or not Riverside StreamYard. <laughs> not we don't use Riverside anymore. I don't really know how to use StreamYard compared to Riverside. Uh, it would be a lot of independent video making with like other softwares probably. So it would look very different than how these templates look with Josh's and stuff. So possibly i was hoping to do two but i just never got around to it and we touched base on them in these videos so which included wanted to do a rookie video with steelers and i also wanted to do um what was the other video we were going to do there's another video you wanted me to do but it doesn't matter we talked about um we talked about at least one of the concepts in this video but yeah or in this uh podcast show so. so yeah that's that's the plan going into it so uh if if you're not subscribed to the youtube channel yet you should be but uh, I, I have not done my spiel in a long time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my spiel real quick. Okay. So, Go ahead. Thank you for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We can be found anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube at No Butts Show. Our social media pages are No Butts underscore show on Instagram and No Butts Show on TikTok. My Twitter is Josh underscore Butts underscore 2001. And if you would like to reach us, you can email us at bullmoosepodcast2. That's the number two at gmail.com. Shout out to Pat McAfee. We're still waiting on your email. Finally, our spread shop will be in the description. So check out the merch, uh, which Chuss is currently wearing, um, even though he wore it through the whole video. Once again, if you enjoyed today's show, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, go do something nice for someone.